Welcome back to AP Red and uh, the Tribeca Film Festival is happening just blocks from where we are. We're inside the uh, Hasted Hunt and Kreitler Galleries. They've been so kind to open their doors and let us come in and meet the cast of the uh, film Beware the Gonzo. Ezra Miller sitting here. How are you, Ezra? Doing pretty good. Enjoying your coffee? Yeah, it's really, it's essential right now. Well, congratulations on the film, man. Thank you. How um, how is it? How did how did it turn out? How do you think you did? I, I think it's I think it's really good. I think it's really good, and I think it's really fun. And I think um, every every message that Brian set out tooth and nail to send was sent in a very funny and light-handed way. I'm always very self-critical. I think when I watch films, but outside of that, I think it's wonderful. Now let's go back to uh, the day that you got the call, went to audition, and stuff like that. Yeah. Well. Um, I read the script, uh, my agent sent it to me, and was like immediately, yes, this, I want to do this, because I'm, I mean, even on, you know, page two, I wanted to do it, just seeing this like muckraking, aspiring, investigative, radical journalist who was obsessed with Hunter S. Thompson, uh, it, 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 was, it was kind of immediately essential. And then my agency just set me up with a meeting with Brian. And we sat down and we locked eyes and it was like, oh, this is on. Like, just like sort of a, an alignment of energy and brand of Hunter S. Thompson obsession. And, you know, just like we dug on the same music and it just all like clicked and like we were, we were really in it. So it was more of a just conversation, get to know each other, than Yeah, and then they, they, he actually trusts, and I guess during that meeting, he had me just sort of cold read a few things out of the script and off of that meeting cast me way before before the film even happened. So then we had the, all this time to sort of brew on it. And How talk. long ago was that, your first meeting with him? December. Uh, the Yeah, last, well, not the December before, the one we've just passed. Two Christmases ago. Picture it. <laughs> Two Christmases ago. All right. No, no, no. <laughs> so you, uh, you're playing the title uh, character, Gonzo. Yes, indeed. Self-named. Really? Born Edward Gilman. Um, but then changes his name to Gonzo because of this obsession and emulation of uh, the so, Hunter S. Thompson ethos and style of journalism. So my take in on the, the Muppet character is completely out of bounds. I'd say it's mm, out of bounds, but definitely on the grid. Because you don't look like Gonzo from the Muppets. What? You don't. I'm sorry. Maybe he does a little bit. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> 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 what was it like though? Once you guys got cast, did you you know you all met together and and hung out? I'm assuming and socialized some. Yes. Um, what was life like on you know when you got to get together and meet everybody? Awesome. Really like all the the meeting kind of had. Okay. First of all, like. There was one person who I met um, long before making the film, which was Griffin Newman. Uh, Griff I've known Griffin Newman for six years, and he's a really great friend of mine, and he played my best friend in this movie, and, and we, we actually, you know, um, we've done all this, like, sketch comedy and improv together from, like, all the way back to summer camp. So I knew him, and then I met Zoe for a chemistry read and, like, immediately clicked, you know, in intensely with her, and then... Met uh, met the rest of them sort of as as we got going on, mm -hmm. on production, um, and met the unexpectedly, unbelievably, and mind blowing um, dude Jesse McCartney um, on the on the first day he shot, uh, and you know just being a a, a blind skeptic of pop music. I was a little cynical and then <laughs> shot his first day, man, and cynicism gone. Right. Like completely. Um, so yeah, and meeting everyone, Edward Gelbinovich, and then meeting the people playing my parents, Amy Sedaris, who's, who's hysterically legendary yeah. and amazing. She's a comedic genius. And Campbell Scott, um, and Jude Friedlander, and just meeting them all, it was very exciting. And then all, just all the, all the kids down to the littlest parts were just so, like, these wonderful people who were really sort of true to the spirit of the film. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, yeah, it was great. It was just an amazing experience to meet all of these uh, incredible people and form these connections while, while working on something so fun. Right. How, 
Explain your character, Gonzo. Um, yeah. Uh, Gonzo wants a, an exciting existence. And he does have a true allergy to injustice. Um, and he, the conjunction of those two things, I think, in his mind is this, you know, this, this revolutionary journalism, how a journalist can, can write a piece and it will just spark mayhem. You know, in, in the original script, he was really obsessed with all the president's men, mm-hmm. just the Bernstein, like that whole you know, thing of, of they, without those guys, Watergate, we wouldn't know anything about the cover-up, like all these secrets that are kept within administrations. And he just, he wants an exciting existence and he wants to make it for himself. And he's sort of using Gonzo ideology of putting himself as this over-dramatized character that, you know, he enjoys being into the action and creating, you know, catastrophe. Awesome. <laughs> um, and then essentially uh, it feeds his ego when it, when it takes off in such a crazy way and at that point you know he becomes power hungry and you know he's got all this ju- these judgments of Jesse McCartney's character Gavin Riley but then you know is almost becoming what he set out to not be just because uh, you know this power is corrupting him and what what was supposed to be a movement Mm -hmm. is becoming all about him and something we're taking a mighty long time to learn is like a movement can't just float on a singular you know ego because ego the the way like that works is it's very um, mercurial you know it hits a lot of extremes and so that you know that's that's how he sort of self sabotages and brings the whole thing down with with your circle of friends and growing up and stuff were you more the leader or the follower mm, i don't know i think i i think i struggled between it all i think i've i've had a lot of friends and relationships where i was certainly um the recessive like the the one looking up to and Following, I've always tended to be friends with older people, mm-hmm. um, but then at the same time, I'm definitely like, you know, I have a tendency to be like very like opinionated and forthcoming with ideas. So in that sense, I, I can I can try to be a leader sometimes, but I I think in my life and especially in my like when I was a little younger, it was all about emulating, which I think means that I'm a follower. <laughs> yeah, no, but there are pieces of both that you yeah, put yeah, together. Yeah, absolutely. I don't, think it, was, really I don't think it was one or the other. Yeah, there's some people that are very strong and, you know, that it's their way and that right. kind of a thing and chameleons that right. become right. whatever the situation is. Yeah, absolutely. That's me. Yeah, you're totally just shifting around. Yeah. I can't even trust you right now. I don't even know if this is your real face. It totally is. Okay. It's I'm my sorry. real face. That was embarrassing. And thank you. You probably now have pancake makeup on your hand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, your, your kind of advice to like other actors that are starting out and uh, you know getting big parts and big films. Oh. How do you keep normal? How do you keep your head on your shoulders? Well, keep it. You know, evaluate every day why you're doing what you're doing. If you can keep it about. An art form. This is one of the most exciting things I think a human being can do. Is this is this art form, and um, I feel like a lot of kids get into it. And there's this, you know, it's it's about fame, it's about money, it's about it's a business. This, yeah. yeah, this this and again, self importance. It can become about that really easily, and that's that's what everybody's mm-hmm. on some level going to feed to you. And like, you just got to be really wary and keep thinking about why you're why you're doing this. And one thing that I um, can definitely um, relate to in keeping humble is when you're about to do an interview, spill coffee in your lap. Yes. That definitely keeps you humble. All right, Ezra, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Great to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you, too. And uh, see him on the big screen in Beware the Gonzo. Thanks for watching AP Red.